Well, good morning. Merry Christmas. It's good to see you all this morning. In Jesus' name, we welcome you to worship at Cross Lutheran Church. We're glad you're here. And I do just have one brief announcement. I did make the announcement last night as well, but I would ask that you would hold the family of Ellie Wisman in your thoughts and your prayers during this Christmas season and also in the weeks to come. Ellie died this past Sunday, and her services are pending in coordination with her niece, Wendy Peets King. So I invite you to do that. And then we'll spend just a moment or two preparing our hearts and minds for worship. I invite you to stand for the confession and forgiveness found on page 94 in your hymnals. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our opening hymn this morning, number 288, Good Christian Friends Rejoice.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Our hymn of praise this morning is number 292, Love Has Come. pray together the prayer of the day found in your bulletin. Let us pray. All-powerful and unseen God, the coming of your light into our world has brightened weary hearts with peace. Call us out of darkness and empower us to proclaim the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first lesson for Christmas Day is from the book of Isaiah, Chapter 62, beginning with the sixth verse. This can be found in the Old Testament on page 693. Isaiah chapter 62, verses 6 through 12. Upon your walls, O Jerusalem, I have posted sentinels. All day and all night they shall never be silent. You who remind the Lord, the Lord, take no rest, and give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem 
and makes it renowned throughout the earth. The Lord has sworn by his right hand and by his mighty arm, I will not again give your grain to be food for your enemies, and foreigners shall not drink the wine for which you have labored. But those who garner it shall eat it and praise the Lord, and those who gather it shall drink it in my holy courts. Go through, go through the gates, prepare the way for the people. Build up, build up the highway, clear it of stones, lift up an ensign over the peoples. The Lord has proclaimed to the end of the earth, Say to daughter Zion, See, your salvation comes. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. They shall be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord, and you shall be called, sought out, a city not forsaken. Here ends the first lesson. The second lesson is from Titus chapter 3, beginning with verse 4. This can be found in the New Testament on page 215. Titus chapter 3, verses 4 through 7. When the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of any works of righteousness that we had done, but according to his mercy, through the water of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. This Spirit he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that, having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. The word of the Lord. I invite you to turn to page 58 in the New Testament of your Bibles as we read the Holy Gospel according to Luke 2, 8 through 20. We read together the Christmas Gospel. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph, and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God, for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. The Gospel of our Lord.
Well, for most of us, the Christmas story is so familiar, isn't it? We come to worship where we hear those familiar scripture readings, we sing beautiful carols, we light candles together, we remember, we pray. And in the midst of this familiar story, maybe so familiar that we might miss the role or the roles that we actually play in the Christmas story or even the message that we hear during Christmas time or even the messages that God offers us through those messages. So during Advent, we looked at the biblical events and we looked at the people that were surrounding the birth of Jesus and how those people still speak to our lives today. We've worshipped around what it means to wait with hope and with joy and with love. We've experienced the journey of John the Baptist and the call of Mary, people that were used by God and that were also aware of what saying yes to it all might mean to God's overall story. We heard that things don't always go as planned, yet God provides even during those times. So today, on Christmas, we dwell in and we dwell on the story that we just read, Luke 2, verses 8 through 20. As the shepherds hear the good news of great joy from an angel of the Lord, who tells them, not to be afraid because a Savior has been born in the city of David, Bethlehem. And then, along with the voice of the angel of the Lord, other voices join in as well. We now have this multitude of heavenly hosts, right? These angels who praise God and who sing that familiar chorus, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom God favors. And so then the angels return to heaven, and the shepherds then use their voices in following the angels' announcement and invitation. They all then gather around the manger and leave to tell others what they experienced and saw. And they continue to praise and to glorify God to what they've heard and seen as it's been told to them. And so the voices grow around those heavenly hosts even larger. Well, the call for us as disciples and believers, we're called to use our voices as well, to invite others, right, to come and to see and to experience the good news of Christmas, even before December 24th or December 25th, as we look around and as we seize opportunities right now, today, to share what good news this is about the birth of Jesus. Come to heal and come to redeem a world that's badly in need of a Savior. So the biblical story is really, the Christmas story, I mean, is really biblical drama. It is biblical drama. It is a miracle beyond our wildest expectations. God come to earth, revealed to us in the flesh and the blood of a tiny baby, told in a variety of ways and media. We know that. So I'm going to trust that you're willing to listen to one more voice. It stars an ordinary person like you and me and a voice, the voice. In the Christmas play by Carol Lynn Pearson, where auditions are being held right now this morning as I read What Better Time on Christmas Day. The sign at the Neighborhood Theater read, Christmas Play Auditions Today. I went inside and up onto the stage alone. The spotlight was bright, nearly blinding, and I raised a hand to shield my eyes, and a voice came from the darkness, full and rich. You wish to try out for my play? Well, feeling butterflies, I replied, I do. 
I've always wanted to be in the Christmas story. Wonderful. Sounded the voice brightly. The the play begins with the angel. I bet you'd be a fine angel. You do proclaim peace, goodwill, don't you? And bring good tidings of great joy. You don't complain a lot, do you? I looked down and dug the stage with my toe. Well, I wouldn't call it a lot. How about angelic encounters? I'll bet people are always having experiences with you that leave them saying, that must have been an angel. I laughed. Well, angelic is a bit much, don't you think? Would you settle for generally pleasant or congenial encounters? The voice was silent. And then, still enthusiastic, the voice said, I also need a shepherd. Have you been keeping watch over your flock by night? My flock? You know, family, friends, strangers, that flock I gave you. Well, most days I... No, 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 by night. The voice filled with tenderness said... Then the hard things happen to you, to them. Your flock is in safe hands, isn't it? The whole flock, even the one? Oh, even the one? Well, maybe not. I cringed, and I thought, especially if that one happened to be that telemarketer that called me the other day. After a pause, the voice spoke again. I need a wise man, too. Clearly, this part was a favorite. I could hear the excitement building. Tell me about following the star, about keeping your eye on the light and looking up, not down. Tell me about traveling reverently through the heart of every person I place in your path. Through the heart of everyone, I asked? Surely you don't mean everyone. Silence. I spoke again. Is there another part? There is the one who gives birth. The voice asked gently. How are you at nurturing every good thought conceived in your mind? At birthing every good intention? Relieved, I said, oh, you mean doing things. Now that I'm good at. I've got my resume right here. I'd rather hear you read the line on page 12, halfway down, the line about trust. I love this line. Be be it unto me. Go ahead. Thumbing through the script, I found the page, and I cleared my throat. throat) Be it unto me according to my word, that one? That one exclaimed the voice. But say it with a little more conviction. I like conviction. Be it unto me. My voice cracked, and I peered out into the darkness. Are there any other parts? I need a good Joseph. Can you stand back and be supportive, going quietly about your work and not upstaging people? You don't need top billing, do you? Your name and lights? You're not here for the applause, are you? Well, no, of course not, but um, I'd still get my name in the program, wouldn't I? And if you didn't? The voice asked kindly, well, I was hoping for a little, you know, recognition. There's another role I need to fill. The voice paused thoughtfully. A very demanding role, the holy child. Oh, (laughs) I don't think... Full of hope, the voice interrupted. Can you stand where you stood? Can you love, feel compassion for, and forgive those who hate you? Could you die for them? Look, I don't know about... I don't know about that. May I hear the line at the top of page 47? It's one of my favorites. I found the page, and I found the line. Oh, wow, this one is almost impossible. Yes, almost. I muttered under my breath, and I suppose I have to say this one with conviction as well. I took a deep breath. Love your enemies. Ah, such a great line. Do good to them which hate you. Can you give me a little more passion? I sighed, and I peered out into the darkness again. Do you need a sheep? The voice thundered. No one needs a sheep. I need a star. 
I backed away from the light. Okay, clearly this was a mistake. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll just, and then the voice again, warmly. Congratulations, you get the part. I do? I get the part? Which part? All of them. This is a one-person play. You know. Oh, I didn't know. Cautiously, I took a step forward. Do you, do you think I can do this? The voice spoke with conviction. For this moment you were born. Barely able to breathe, I ventured. You'll help me? That's my job, my only job. You'll be my director and my prompter? Every step of the way. Butterflies again. Shyly, I grinned. Suddenly it felt right, as if I had at last found my calling. I'd like it to be really good, I said. How long do I have to work on it? Forever, said the voice. But I wouldn't waste any time if I were you. The world is waiting. Can we start now, I asked. Now would be perfect. I could hear the smile. Shall we begin? I took my hand down from my eyes. Perhaps I had been growing accustomed to this light. I thought I felt the warmth of an arm across my shoulder. All right, I said, let's begin. The curtain rises. The world is waiting, friends. The world is waiting, waiting for our voices to be heard and our hearts to share in this good news and the peace of the angels in those safe hands of the shepherds and in that persistent wisdom of the wise men. The world is waiting as our own curtain rises in our own call to be that nurturing of Mary, to be that support and that courage of Joseph and to be that compassion and love and forgiveness and light of Jesus Christ, waiting for us to reflect that light, God's light, in a world that would be doomed to darkness without it, waiting for us to be the voices and the vessels of that true light, that true light, our blessed hope. It is our blessed hope, the one who came into the world full of grace and full of truth in order to save us all. Because the truth of the matter is, all our voices matter to God, and we're called to use them in thanks and in praise and in wonder and in awe and in proclamation and also in hope. So how is your Christmas so far? How are we all helping to share and to tell that story? Whose role will we play today and throughout the year? Throughout the year. Amen.
I invite you to turn to page 126 in your hymnals as we confess together the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing in the good news of Christ's birth, we pray for the church, those in need, and all of creation. Holy God, you raise up leaders throughout the church to proclaim your word of hope. Unite the church through the good news of our salvation so that all will know and experience your goodness and grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You created the world with goodness and light, mountains and hills, seas and rivers, and all creatures. Give us those tender and compassionate hands for all you have made, so that we may live wisely with these your gifts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You desire, God, that all your people live in peace. Guide all in positions of authority to lead with fairness and truth. Give courage to advocates and us to give hands, hearts, and voices to those who need it. To speak and to act as we bear witness to your gospel in what we say and do. End war and provide safe avenues of relief to refugees, the stranger, the immigrant, the lonely, the poor, the sick, and for all those we name silently or aloud before you. Lance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You gather us together in community, blessing us with friends and family. Make yourself known to all who worship today and send us out with a deeper love for you, our neighbor, and ourselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On this Christmas day, hear the prayers of your people, Lord, for the sake of your Son, born in a manger to a world greatly in need, of a Savior and of good news, come to reconcile and redeem us and all creation. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share signs of peace with one another.
We pray together the offering prayer found in your bulletin. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We turn to page 206 in your hymnals for the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We the Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. In the wonder and mystery of the word made flesh, you have opened the eyes of faith in a new and radiant vision of your glory, that beholding the God made visible, we may be drawn to love the God whom we cannot see. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.
I invite you to stand. Let us pray. Emmanuel, God with us, you grace us with life and breath and give us bread for the journey. Send us out in service to this world that you love so much, telling the amazing news of your coming to be Lord and Savior to all. Amen. And now grace from God's own heart, peace from the Christ child in the manger, and strength from the spirit of life be blessings for you on this Christmas day and forever. Amen. We sing our sending hymn, Go Tell It on the Mountain, number 290.